In just 45 days, the Crimson Tide will take the field against Kent State. It is ticking down. Bama fever already taking hold across the Crimson Nation. SEC Media Days will showcase all 12 schools from the Southeastern Conference. On the schedule today, Florida, Mississippi State, Arkansas, South Carolina. For the next three days, coaches and players will set up in front of several media outlets, taking stage in front of the camera also. They'll be talking about their season plans. Gary Harris will have much more from Birmingham coming up later in Alabama's home team sports. While Media Day signals a green light on the season, some are wondering, is the city of Tuscaloosa going to have to put a red light on fans coming into town after these storms? In light of the April 27th tornado and all the damage that's still left behind, a big question is, will the city be ready to handle the traffic and the crowds? According to city officials, the city will have no problem accommodating the surge of people. Tuscaloosa's Director of Planning and Development, John McConnell, says tornado damage will not change any football game day routes. We're going to try our best to have a lot of the debris cleaned up by the time they get here. And if there are any issues with vacancies and hotels, the city will do its best to try to uh, help sort out those issues. Kickoff for the Crimson Tide is set for 11:21 a.m. Saturday, September 3rd. Since the April storms, many local people may have gotten lost, even made a wrong turn because so many landmarks they're familiar with are simply gone. Well, believe it or not, there's actually a name for this phenomenon. It's called the ability to wayfind and has many people getting lost in neighborhoods they've grown up in. Doctors say it happens when their normal routes are disrupted because of a change in scenery caused by construction or even a natural disaster like the April 27th tornado. WVUA spoke with psychologist Dr. Beverly Roskus about why it may happen to you. They need those step-by-step -step directions. Turn right at this corner where the Exxon station is. Turn left at the stoplight, at the third stoplight. And so they need those very specific cues. And the, the difference in abilities is if, if they get, the person who's not, doesn't have a good sense of direction gets off the, tr the track, so to speak, they, they miss a turn or something, is more difficult for them to, to find their way again. It has happened to just about all of us, and Dr. Roska says it could take you around five to ten times driving a route before not getting lost. The Tuscaloosa Salvation Army has a new place to call home. They've moved into the former Goodies Department Store in McFarland Mall. Captain Pamela Moret says the number of people asking for help has dropped because of help provided by churches and also some other groups. The Salvation Army's building, you might recall, was hit during the April 27th tornado. Moret says it's important for the community to know the Salvation Army is still there to help. Word has it that a lot of people don't know that we're still doing um, the social services here in the Goody store. And we'll keep doing it probably until the first of the year in January. And the Salvation Army is already looking toward Christmas and asking people to get ready for their Toys for Tots drive. It is a new life for a Tuscaloosa mother of 10. Dana Dowling, a Tuscaloosa resident, is getting help from students from the University of Alabama and Auburn University. They're working with Habitat for Humanity and volunteers are working to rebuild homes for those who lost everything in the storm. Dowling says after her home lost power before the storm, her family never saw the tornado coming. Happening right now, Mercedes is unveiling a new SUV to be built right here in Alabama. The Mercedes-Benz 166 is being unveiled today at the plant in Vance. It's the newest model from the M-Class series. Governor Bentley is on hand for the ceremony to mark the 18-year partnership between the state and Mercedes-Benz. It was the first automotive assembly plant built in the state. WVA will have more coverage from the unveiling. You can see that coverage tonight on the News at 10. Delta Airlines has announced it's cutting service to 24 cities all across the country. The carrier blames high fuel costs and an annual $14 million loss of revenue for those cuts. Alabama is one of the affected states, but only service to Muscle Shoals will be cut. Two cities in Mississippi will also be cut. That's Tupelo and Hattiesburg. Delta has filed a 90-day notice to terminate service to those cities. In some cases, Delta is coordinating with other carriers 
to bid on the routes. On today's Health Watch, don't rely on restaurants to count those calories for you because you may be getting more than what you've bargained for. Listen to this. A Tufts University study shows nearly one out of every five restaurant dishes has at least 100 more calories than what the restaurant claims. Researchers tested samples from common stops like Chipotle, Olive Garden, Boston Market, and Outback Steakhouse. The study also found that sit-down restaurants are more likely to have inaccurate readings. A new federal law will require calories on menus at large chain restaurants in the next year. On your Crime Watch, your chance to help fight crime right here in West Alabama. You might not think it's much, but your piece of information could be that missing link investigators need to catch a suspect. Here now this week's Tuscaloosa County Most Wanted. Hello, my name is Ted Sexton, the Sheriff of Tuscaloosa County. We need your help this week in finding two of Tuscaloosa County's most wanted. Christopher Neal Warren is wanted on the charges of two counts of child abuse. He's a white male, 39 years of age, 6 foot 1, 170 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. He was last known to be living on Old Jasper Road in Barrie, Alabama. We're also looking for Darrell Dante Thomas, wanted on the charge of trafficking cocaine and unlawful possession of controlled substance. He's a black male, 27 years of age, 5 foot 10, 120 pounds, black hair and brown eyes. He was last known to be living on Johnson Road in Tuscaloosa. If you have any information on these two, as well as others wanted by the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, please call us at 205-464-8672 or go to our website at www.tcsoal.org. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Working together, we can continue to make Tuscaloosa County a safer place to live. Meanwhile, the search continues for a robbery suspect in Brookwood. Police say this is the person who robbed the Regents Bank on Highway 216. It happened around 3.30 Tuesday afternoon. Police say a white man walked into the bank, handed the teller a note demanding money. The teller gave the suspect some money, then he left. Brookwood Police Chief Randy Kazaya says multiple law enforcement agencies are now investigating this case. If you have information, please call 205-464-8672.